Hi everyone, the Nurse Models here, and today we're going to take a look at my completed diorama using Tacom's Stug 3 with Winterketten in 135th scale. Now for those that missed my community post last week, I wound up losing a lot of my build footage for the assembly of this kit. I've included what all I could recover, but the need to know is that the kit went together quite nicely and built up as intended. Sure, there were some small parts here and there as well as some PE which was relatively new for me, but taking your time and double checking the instructions at each step will always do you right. Now overall, this build had a number of new things for me. In addition to all of the PE parts that came with the kit, I did pick up a set of third party workable tracks from Quick Tracks. There's a review of these here on this channel, but for those that haven't seen it, Quick Tracks makes these resin workable tracks. Because they aren't metal, they are easier and faster to assemble and take paint significantly better than if they were metal. I found them a joy to work with and will definitely be getting more of them in the future for all of my armor builds if I can. Once assembly was complete, before I could start painting, I wanted to work in some battle damage. After all, this entire build is for the It Be Broke group build over on Model Minutes Discord server. I wanted to go with an AFV that took a penetrating hit to the engine and burst into flames, causing its abandonment on the streets. I accomplished this with a mix of techniques. I used a tea light to heat up a screwdriver to make some of the damage, and a soldering iron was used to clean it up as well as make some of the other portions of damage. Unfortunately, the soldering iron footage was some of the footage that got corrupted, but you should be able to see here the results. Another interesting piece that you'll sometimes see in photos of real life uh, AFVs are undetonated shells that are stuck in the armor. To model this, I simply cut a section of a cocktail stick and glued it in place. With assembly done, we can begin painting. To start, everything from the tracks to the armor itself received a coat of Vallejo Model Color Hull Red, 70.985. It's a little darker than the red oxide primer the tank would have received from the factory, but that's okay. After all, this is going to get covered in rust and soot, so the darker tone will blend nicer with those two effects than the red oxide primer would. Oh, and the tank destroyer proper did get a quick coat of Mr. Primer Surfacer 1000 to get all of that PE ready for paint. I think you'll notice one thing I didn't do that I usually do is pre-shading all of the panel lines in black. There are a number of reasons as to why I skipped this step, not least of being that the way I'll be layering on the paints and washes, I think it would have actually diminished if not nullified the effect. Once this first coat dried, I heavily thinned with water some model color mahogany brown, 70.846, adding a splash of airbrush thinner to improve flow. A spray bottle was used to wet the model and then I applied the wash with a wide flat brush. The water aids in a more natural flow for the wash, mimicking rust developments over time from the elements. The wash was primarily applied to the places where the fire damage would be prominent. Since some of the original paint job would remain, I didn't worry about adding it to the front of the kit, for example. And yes, even the tracks, wheels, and gears got some of this wash. Overall, the model received three or four passes of the wash. The front received a quick coat of Mr. Super Clear Matte Varnish before being painted in Model Air Dark Yellow Dunkelgelb 71.025. I arbitrarily chose how far up the fire damage and paint peel would be, opting for what looked good more than anything. Camo patterning was then added with dark green Dunkelgrun 71.011. I roughly followed the camo pattern in the instructions, but because I was planning on damaging things up, I wasn't terribly worried about being exact with it. And 
And then it was time for another new technique, paint chipping using Microsol. Yes, you heard that right, Microsol, as in the decal setting solution. When applied to paint, it can act just like a chipping fluid. This is why I applied a matte varnish under the Dunkel Geld. Working in small sections, simply paint some Microsol on where you're wanting to do the chipping, give it a moment to set in and affect the paint, and then using a stiff bristled brush you can rub away the paint. As you can see, it sort of froths up as you go about it, so I kept a cotton bud on hand to help clean up things along the way. However, in doing so, I found that the cotton bud can actually be more aggressive at removing paint than the stiff bristled brush. My assumption is that the absorbency soaks up more paint, but whatever the why is, just be mindful of this property if you opt to try this yourself. Once I was happy with the chipping, the entire model was given another coating of the mahogany brown wash. The wash was left to dry, and then I came in with a mix of NATO Black, 71.251, and Mecha Color Dark Grey Green 79.041 and dry brushed in a bunch of soot. This was centered around areas where the fire would be directly as well as the other damaged portions of the AFV. To replicate some dirt that had accumulated after the machine's abandonment, two last washes were applied. The first was a mix of NATO Black and IJN Ash Grey 71.311. Admittedly, I wasn't exact with my measurements here, it just needed to look appropriately dirty. To that wash, I then added a few drops of model color chocolate brown, 70.872, and applied a more targeted application in places where it would be exceptionally grimy. While I let that dry, I went ahead and started work on the base. I was able to pick up the Vallejo Scenics cobblestone street section as a base for the build. The Vallejo Scenics are plaster cast diorama bases that just need paint and then are, they'll be good to go for displaying your models. First, I gave the entire thing a coat of medium gunship gray 71.097 mixed with a drop or two of NATO black. The plaster was quite thirsty and so I had to go over some sections numerous times to get good coverage. Then, using various grays, as well as some browns mixed in with some grays, I picked out random stones to give the road some tonal variation. Once happy with how the stones were looking, the entire base received a coat of a wash, this time made from NATO Black. I left the base to dry overnight, and the next day I started in on the final part of this build, the pigments. Well, to be specific, it's black and brown pastel scraped into a small mixing cup with an awful style utility knife, uh, but you get the idea. First, I started with the dusting of soot on the road itself before placing the vehicle in place to check how it looked. Happy with the spread, I could then start on the stud. All of the fire damage got at least a little bit of pigment applied, though I did go heavier the closer I got to the center of where the flames would have been. Quick coat of Mr. Super Clear gloss varnish and then Tamiya panel line accent color black was quickly tagged to any panel lines that needed it. Excess panel liner was cleaned up with a cotton bud damp with some artist's white spirit. The very last thing to do was to put the tracks on, place the vehicle on the base, and put some last bit of pigment weathering on the tracks. After that, I think we can call this one complete. And there we go. Tack on Stug 3 Offs G with Winter Ketten in 135th, albeit in not so great condition. Overall, I quite enjoyed myself with this build. I got to try some new things, and I think they turned out alright. Let me know in the comments below though what you thought of them. To be honest, I was rather impressed with what all I was able to do with the homemade acrylic washes. I don't know why, it's a rather simple technique, um, and I'll definitely have to work them into more projects in the future I think. I will admit though that this kit isn't the most accurate, 
Um, my battle damage aside, I learned later that the shield for the machine gun, for example, wouldn't have been able to stand up on its own like that. It needed the hatch behind open to be braced, um, and I probably should have lost the machine gun, but, eh, well. Regardless of the inaccuracies, I'm still quite happy with it. Thank you to my gift set tiered patron, Calibear, and to all of my starter set patrons. Your support means the world to me. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a like and possibly click that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me if you wanted to get alerted to my future content and that's the way to go about it. If you want to see some of my previous content, maybe check out one of these two videos here. Either way, I will see you all next week. Remember, stay safe and keep modeling.